Krišna tam bola prvá oslovaný, ako totožného s Krišnou, tak si rukama zacpával uši a, a popíral, že by mal byť Krišna. Because he was playing the part of a devotee. Pretože hral roli odania. Lord Chaitanya knew that in Kali Yuga there would be many bogus incarnations pretending to be God. Čítaná vedel, že v Kali Yuga je mnoho falešných inkarnácií, ktoré predstiera, že sú Boh. And therefore he avoided asserting himself as the supreme personality of Godhead. Preto nechtel vystupovať ako najvyšší osobnosť božstva. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is accepted as the supreme lord. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu je uznávaný za ako najvyšší pán. However, in many Vedic literatures, especially in Srimad Bhagavatam, ale v mnoha vedských textech, zvláště ve Srimad Bhagavatam, Yes. Then this verse, those who know, we can chant together. Tady verš, který můžeme zpívat společně, kdo ho znáte. Krishna vanam vyšá Krishna sanko pangra sta paršadam jakejí sankirna praje jantihi sumedhasa In Kali Yuga, intelligent man worship the Supreme Lord in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kaliuza inteligentní lidé vstívají nejvyššího pána v podobě Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is always accompanied by his associates such as Nityananda, který ho pořád doprovázejí jeho společníci, jako třeba Nityananda, Advaita, Advaita, Gadadha, and Shrivas. Shrivas. The entire Krishna consciousness movement is based on the principles of the Sankirtan movement. Inaugurated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, one who tries to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the medium of the Sankirtan movement, knows everything perfectly. He is Sumedhas, a person with substantial intelligence. He is Sumedhas, a person with substantial intelligence. Yes, it's a very wonderful verse. And we can refer a little more to that Shlok Shilapava quoted in the purport. Takže se můžeme zapřít na tu sloku, kterou už opravdu pán citoval ve významu. By referring to the Lagu Bhagavad Tamrita by Shila Rupa Goswami. Jsi neznamená pro celou Lagu Bhagavad Tamritu od Shila Rupa Goswami. In the second verse, the same Shimad Bhagavatam verse has been quoted. Jako druhý je tam citovaný ten stejný verš ze Šimad Bhagavatam. Krišna Vánu, Tvíša Krišna. Verš. And in the commentary Baladeva Vidya Bhushan explains. Baladeva Vidya Bhushan ve svém komentáři k tomu vysvětlí. This invocation glorifies Krišna Čaitanya. Toto vzývání oslavuje Krišnu Čaitanya. The incarnation of Krishna Himself, incarnation of Samadhi of Krishna, who revealed Krishna's lotus feet to the entire world. The intelligent man is always with Krishna. The intelligent man of Kali Yuga worshipped the Lord. The intelligent man of Kali Yuga worshipped the Lord. The intelligent man of Kali Yuga worshipped the Lord. The intelligent man of Kali Yuga worshipped the Lord. How? Yeah. They worship. They worship by the rules of the Archana. The rules of the Archana are the Archana. Archana simply means to worship the Lord. Archana is the meaning of the Lord. Predominated by Sankirtan. The Prajna is the main Sankirtan. What form of the Lord do they worship? The Lord of the Lord. They worship the person who is Krishna in quality internally. The Lord of the Lord is the person who is Krishna in quality internally. The Lord of the Lord. And that's the meaning of Krishna Varna. That's the meaning of Krishna Varna. There's one quotation, Varno, Vijadi, Shukladi Yasho, Guna, Katasu, Cha. 
Vana means, Vana refers to caste. Such as the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, etc. It also refers to colors. White, golden. It also refers to a fame, quality. And speech, so richy. But this external form is not black like Krishna. Toto vnější podoba není černá jako Krishna. Devo says in his in his verse, "A Krishna." To je to verše A Krishna. Garga Chaya, Garga Muni, he also foretold. Garga Chaya, Garga Muni taky předpovídá. Shuklo Raktasata Pita. Idanim Krishna Tam Gataha, the white, red, and yellow forms have now appeared in Krishna. From this it can be understood that A Krishna or Natlak means having a golden complexion. The white and red forms appeared in Satya and Treta Yugas. Anga refers to Nityananda Prabhu and Advaita. They're, because they are also Ishvara Tattva. Upanga refers to Shiva's Pandit and others. Astra means weapon. That refers to the holy name of the Lord. That is uh, Mahaprabhu's weapon. And that weapon kills the darkness of ignorance. He explains it cuts down the forest. Of <laughs> the Parshadas are the Dadha, Govinda, and other associates. The Lord has appeared with all these persons. But this indicates his uh, great strength. In Gaga's statement, the word Peter occurs with uh, avatars who appeared previously. It should be understood that this avatar appears only in Kali Yuga. In the 28 cycle of Vaivasvatamana, in the Shweta Varaha Kalpa. This is always amazing. If we imagine that the Lord Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they only appear once in Lord Brahma's day. Four billion three hundred twenty thousand years. Yes, four billion. In German, it's uh, in German trillion or something. Four billion three hundred twenty million years. This is how long one day of Lord Brahma is. So this is what, what Krishna and Mahaprabhu, what they decided that we will not appear every day in the human lifespan, but no Brahmas. Uh, that shows how fortunate we are. Because Mahaprabhu just appeared a little more than 500 years ago. 
má opravdu tady byl jenom před trochu víc než pět tisíci let. And after Mahaprabhu appeared, then the human beings on this planet, or in fact all the creatures on the earthly planet, again they have to wait for another, for another that same period, four billion three hundred twenty years they have to wait till again Mahaprabhu Krishna appeared. So we uh, took birth just shortly after, it's so close to Mahaprabhu's appearance. Um, his pastimes are still <coughs> available, they're being recorded. Navadvidham, Mayapur, they can be visited. They're so close to Mahaprabhu's appearance. The avatar can only be Chaitanya Mahaprabhu since the present verse describes only his qualities. In other Kali Yugas, the Lord appears in the Shyama, that doesn't mean black Shyama, in this sense it means the color of the, what they call Shirisha, in Sanskrit Shirisha, means very dark green. And uh, these are empowered jivas, shakti All the other kali yugas, the shakti vesha avatar, the jiva empowered by the Lord appears, and then in order to spread the jiva down. The Lord does not appear in Kali Yuga personally. It explained in the Vishnu Dharma. Only three Yugas exist. Except that the 2028 Divya Yuga. One Divya Yuga consists of four Yugas. There's one Divya Yuga. So then the Lord Brahma appears. Then he takes birth. So then the uh, eight you know, uh, cycles of the four yugas, then 28 of those cycles pass after Lord Brahma's birth. <coughs> Only then Krishna appears. And then Shaitanya. The worshippers are called intelligent because they understand the meaning of statements such as Chana Kalo Yat Abhava. Shana means cover. Mahaprabhu is described as a covered avatar. Because he does not uh, exhibit himself as the Supreme Lord. This is what Srila Prabhupada described in the purport. If someone referred to him as the Supreme Lord, it covered his ears immediately. <laughs> These Maya bodies, <laughs> they open the ears. <laughs> Someone refers to them as God. That's the difference between the Lord and the living entity. <laughs> the Lord covers his ears. He is the supreme personality of God. He is God. He covers his ears. Living entity opens his ears <laughs> to be identified as God. 
There's a difference between God and living entities. So in this way, Balaji uh, Bita Bhushan comments on this particular verse. And uh, we can see how Shri Prabhupada in his, in his purpose, how carefully he uh, um, he uses all these various quotations of our Vaishnava Chalas. Therefore, mm -hmm. actually, there is no need to uh, study to read so many different explanations. Everything is in Prabhupada's uh, teachings. And if something is not so essential for us to know, then Prabhupada is mentioned. <laughs> if something is essential, yes, then Prabhupada he uses. Everything is in Prabhupada's books, that's what he said. Just study very carefully on a regular basis. And uh, follow our sadhana process. Another explanation, also very interesting, Shila Bhakti Thakur gives. That sadhana. Why is it so important to practice sadhana? Because by practicing sadhana bhakti, one invokes the compassion and mercy of Guru and Krishna. The Guru and Krishna immediately become pleased if someone practices sadhana bhakti. And sometimes we might raise the question, well, what are, why I'm chanting, why I'm reading, why I do all these things? Of course, you know, for purification and that we can make advancement. But the most important is Buddha and Krishna are pleased by them. And then we can make tangible progress. Because if Guru Krishna is not pleased, we can chant as much as we like. We can stand on our head or do anything, but we cannot make any progress. Like someone riding on a bicycle and then you just lift, you know, in the back you just lift the bicycle from the, from the ground. And he can drive as fast as he likes. Not one inch of it, that putting down the bicycle down to the ground, that means to follow sadhana very nicely, Guru Krishna please, then you can, even if you drive very slow, you make progress. However, that progress is also hampered, blocked, if we do these uh, uh, treating Vaishnavas properly, you see all these offenses. And that we also have to stop. Always be uh, humble and respectful to the Vaishnavas. To all the devotees. Always be res respectful. And try to be humble. There are so many definitions of what that means. <coughs> the one definition is that uh, you uh, feel a distaste for being glorified. 
vás nechucuje, kdybyste měli poslouchat oslavování vás Nelíbí se vám být středem pozornosti. Nemáte proto chuť. Although possessing all kinds of uh, qualities and qualifications, you don't want this to be glorified, even recognized. It is not easy. Because your society is exactly the opposite. So it is difficult, but if we try sincerely, it will work. We only place ourselves in the center of attention for Krishna's service. Srimati Radharani is the very embodiment of all humility. But in the Rasa Lila dance, she was right in the middle. <laughs> Why? You should some hide behind the tree. Humility. No. She wanted to please Krishna. For that we don't mind, whether in the center or at the edge of the center or whatever, or the down up. For Krishna's service, in order to please Guru Krishna, we do anything. But if we do it for ourselves, then everything is spoiled. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai gaur pramanande. Any comments, thoughts? Okay, commentars and shlanki. Humility that we get a low self esteem and uh, low opinion of ourselves. This is why association, association with the advanced devotees is important. Because they can differentiate between <laughs> feeling or just a low self esteem. Uh, feeling useless in a material sense, and you really become useless. <laughs> and then they will point out. We might have so many feelings, but what about service, serving Krishna? Because that's uh, on the material platform. That's that's another uh, sign of false ego. <laughs> another attitude of being recognized. <laughs> if you feel like this, I'm useless, nothing, and you and you expect someone to <laughs> to take attention. Říkáte, že vám někdo bude věnovat pozornost. And you even feel disturbed if someone wants to uh, uh, get you out of that condition, you feel disturbed. Because it feels, uh, on one hand it looks like you are suffering, but actually it feels good. <laughs> because somehow you, you uh, um, generate you know, attention from people. And that's, uh, that's the pleasure. It's very subtle. 
for its sequel. You might think that I really feel, you know, I'm really, I'm hon honestly, I feel like some useless and fallen was Distinction is also there. Because, because everybody feeling normal doing their activities. You don't want to merge in the crowd. <laughs> you want to distinct yourself. You want to be something different from them. So that's also what that feeling, the motivation of that feeling is so useless because I cannot do anything. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Nobody understands me. Even I don't understand myself. <laughs> so it feels good because you distinct yourself from anybody else. It's just another another cry for attention and distinction. Like one time, a, a disciple <laughs> mentioned to Shila Prabhupada he wanted to you know, show his humility. <laughs> in a famous statement. <laughs> famous statement that the devotee said, Oh, Shila Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. <laughs> the Prabhupada replied, You are you're most nothing. You are nothing most. You are nothing most. Because most again means something important. <laughs> you are most intelligent, you are most this, most that. So if you say I'm you know I'm the most fallen, again something most, something important. <laughs> More than others. So the Prabhupada replied, you are, you are nothing most. Completely, we should feel like this, completely average. <laughs> Some, somewhere in the middle. Not lower, not higher, exactly somewhere in the middle. Something completely, nobody pays attention to. <laughs> This is why humble devotees, they like, they really like crowds of devotees. As more as better. Because then you can really merge. You just nobody. There is one among thousands and thousands of devotees. Many don't even know you because as more the bodies are present, as more the chances that you know, someone someone doesn't know you at all. And then they treat you accordingly. You just, they don't know you know That's good. Good for our ego. I don't know you. You're nobody. Very nice. <laughs> practice. Practice humility. However, for service, that's a different issue. Sometimes also Krishna wants to glorify his then we can, you know, we can hide ourselves as much as we like, but Krishna will pull us <laughs> behind the tree or whatever. And he, because he wants to glorify his devotees by placing his devotee in the center of attention. That's another thing. So that's uh, in a very good point where. Where's the borderline between uh, the mundane emotion of the self-esteem or uh, factual spiritual humility? Sometimes not easy to distinguish. 
tím nízkou sebedůvěrou, která je světská, anebo duchovní pokorou, snadné rozeznat. Basically we have to remember one principle. Tak v základě bychom si měli pamatovat jeden princip. Real spiritual humility means you're, you're serving Krishna. Skutečná duchovní pokora znamená, že sloužíte Krishna. That's the, 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 the symptom of spiritual humility. You serve Krishna. Sloužíte Krishna. If, uh, if you don't, in, in that condition, if you have the desire not to serve Krishna, that means it is Monday. It's a mundane emotion. I'm so fallen, I'm so low. What's the use of doing anything? That's a mundane emotion. Spiritual means I'm so low, I'm so fallen. Therefore, let me serve Krishna. It's the only shelter I have. It's the only hope I have. Rendering service to Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhu Pariti Jai Gaur Premanandi.